All right, so this is the last of the I's, which is what I'll have you guys doing all week. This is I8, the powers of I. So there's only four things you got to remember. They're on your form quiz, which you haven't had in a while. I know some of you kids who are used to making hundreds really want one, so you can get some extra points. Because that last test kicked your little butt. Unless you were Marley. Good job, Marley. Oh, anyways, sorry, there was that. To do this, I have to know four little things. I actually only have to know four little things, but this one's kind of redundant. It's the definition of I. You hardly ever use it, to be honest with you, unless you're evaluating square roots and negatives. If you were to square both sides, you were to square the negative square root, you would get that I squared is negative one. So that's something you memorize. I cubed, if you go back and remember your rules from algebra one, can be thought of as I times I squared. Well, I know that I squared is now negative one, so this is a I times a negative one, which is a negative I. All right, so I cubed is negative I, something that you just stick in your head and keep in your head. I to the fourth is going to be thought of as I squared times I squared. Each one of those I squareds is worth negative one. So negative one times negative one becomes one. So here's the definition of I to the fourth. I to the fourth is now known as one forever and ever and ever. So those are the four things on your form quiz you're supposed to memorize. That's all there is to know about the powers of I. It really is. I swear it is. There's a little shortcut, too, when you start dealing with some big, crazy exponents. But that's the gist of it. So I of the cube, by definition, is negative I. I squared, negative 1. I to the fourth, 1. I'm at a 37, just knowing things. Now, here's where it starts getting interesting. I to the tenth. So it's finally getting a little interesting. Now, here's how you're supposed to think of it, and then I'll talk about a shortcut, okay? I to the tenth is equivalent to I to the fourth times I to the fourth times I squared. That's what I to the tenth is, if you think about the exponents, because we have properties of adding exponents when we multiply together. Four plus four plus two is ten fingers, kids. So I to the tenth is going to be a one, because I to the fourth is one times a one times I squared, which is negative one. This ends up being negative one. When everything's said and done, it's negative one. All right? So I'll do that one. The next one, hopefully, I'll get to show you the shortcut on. But this guy is going to be negative one. Next one should be a little more interesting. If not, we'll worry about it when we get there. I to the eighth, yeah, it's not really that interesting, is it? So I still can going to explain this the old, old way. I to the eighth is going to be a double I to the fourth. <coughs> That's what it is. It's one times one, which is just one. I can guarantee you a whole bunch of you guys are just going to sit here and, and guess one, negative one, and so forth. That's what you're going to do. Now you got to learn a thing. You know, because you're kids, and that's what kids do. Brilliant, Mr. Milbrath. I to the 65th got interesting. That's where we need a better technique, okay? So I to the 65th is a high power. I to the 65th power. I don't want to write out I to the 4th, I to the 4th, I to the 4th, I to the 4th. The key is, in I to the 4th, however, the key is I to the 4th. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 65, and I'm going to divide it by 4. All right, how many times is 4 in our 65? I believe it goes in 16 times. So that's 64 with one piece left over. 16 with a remainder of 1. Okay? 
So if you want to think about this using exponents, you have 16 of these blasted out of the force, and then you have an I left over. That's how you do it. I to the fourth is 1, so you have a 1 to the 16th power times an I. 1 times itself 16 times is still going to be 1. You're left with I. Focus on the big deal here. That's the big deal. I had a remainder of 1. I had I to the first power. That's what I cared about. I cared about that remainder, I to the first. So that's my answer, just I. Oh, I got to type it. There we go. I can press it. Cool. So I to the 72nd, that's up next. I to the 72nd power. The deal is, figure out how many times 4 enters 72. We'll see how many times it happens. That's an exact number, actually. There is no remainder, so that's kind of cool. But uh, 4 enters 72, 15, 18 times. 18 times with a remainder of zero. So here's my answer. My answer is I to the zero. It's always I to the remainder, okay? Anything, and this is on your form quiz, most of y'all are not answering this, but anything with an exponent of zero doesn't equal zero, it equals one. So there's my answer, one. I gotta type that one. Super, no breath, super. So the exponents seem to be getting bigger. I the 229 power now. And just go back to your old long school division. Do it in your head. I don't care. I'm just going to board for you all to see it. 4 will enter 2, but it will enter 22 five times. The remainder here being, sorry, the remainder is not done yet. Subtract. 22 minus 20 is 2. Bring down the 9. 4 enters 29, what? Seven times? There's my remainder. So the answer to this guy is that it is equivalent to i to the first power, which is just i. That's all it is, just i. Terrific. <laughs> That's kind of just this. Let me see if I can level up because I know I'm pushing that 10 minute boundary here. Oh, there's lots of levels left. I, how is that a level five question? I to the negative second? Actually, that is a level five question. Okay, so they're introducing called negative exponents. Cool. So this is worth talking about. On your form quiz, we actually haven't formally had this lesson, but you had it as your freshman year. On your form quiz, you have x to the negative a. It is equivalent to one over x to the a. That's what it's equivalent to. So this is i to the negative second power, which is equivalent to 1 over i squared, which is equivalent to 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. All that work to get a negative 1. That is i to the negative first power. That can be. That's kind of funky. That is actually really funky. I wonder if it's going to accept a fraction or if there's something else here that I'm not aware of. Because I didn't know anything like that ever. I've done math for a long time. Never been asked that. I to the negative first will be written as 1 over I. I don't know what else to do with it. I could write it as 1 over the square root of negative 1, but that doesn't make a lick of sense. So the only thing I can actually type in is 1 over i. Is that what they want? 1 divided by i? There was no fraction key. I bet I missed this. The correct answer is negative i. Very interesting. So I'm learning something here.
Okay, there's that step. Oh, because I'm an idiot. Remember your previous lesson where we had an I in the denominator? Because I do. I'm just being an idiot. Got it. Okay, so let's go back up to that one. This one is, uh, we did this one earlier. What was this one? This one was negative one. Let's bump back up there. Here we are back to I to the negative first. Redemption. I don't believe I did that. So I to the negative first is equivalent to 1 over I. Of course, the issue with this is it's not in standard form. It's not in the form A plus BI. That's its issue. So to fix that, I multiply it. And some teachers will teach by the conjugate. If it works well, you can do that. But you just multiply it by a negative I. Some will just say multiply it by an I. doesn't matter. 1 times i is just i. That's all it is. Down low, you have a negative i squared. And you know by now that negative i squared is worth what? Sorry. That should be a negative symbol. I have a negative i over a 1. So there's my answer. Can I believe I did something that stupid? But I'm not perfect. Now I have it, don't I? We've already done that one. Is it just going to keep asking me that thing over and over and over and over and over? Wasn't that negative 1? I to the negative 8th. What does that do? It should be 1. It should be. I to the negative 8th is 1 over I to the 8th, which can be thought of as 1 over I to the 4th, I to the 4th. Every time you see an I to the fourth, you get a one. So one over one, or just one. Out of the negative ninth, that's probably going to be negative one. Let's see what happens here. Is there another level we can approach? We're only at six of eight. So it's getting a little interesting there. That's a I to the negative 69th power. I'm going to stick with my little rule here of dividing by 4. All right? I think it's 17. No, 15. Yeah, it's 17. It's going to go into negative 17 times. That's going to give me negative 68. When I subtract down, I've got one thing left over. So that's how I'm doing this problem. Should work just fine. I the negative 69th power should be equivalent to, uh, by the way, that's negative, I to the negative first. Which again is 1 over I. I fix it by multiplying by the complex conjugate, negative i over negative i, and I get negative i over 1. So negative i. Use that little division by 4 rule. It always works. I talk a lot of smack watching this, this thing. Apparently I'm still correct. That is i to the negative 734th power. This will be where I stop it. I'm going to do 90, 95. Mainly I'm just ready to go. I to the negative 734. I to the negative 734. So, you know, somewhere off the side, you figure out how many times 4 under 734. It doesn't really matter if you make the number positive or not, negative or not. It doesn't matter. Just realize when you put it back up here, it's going to be negative. Ah, let's see if we can enter 7 once. Subtracting it a 3, bring down a 3. 4 times what? 8 is 32. Subtract, you get a 1, bring down the 4. If we can enter that 3 times, we'll get a 12. There's my remainder. 2. I to the negative 734th power is equivalent to I to the negative 2nd. They're not even doing anything different. They're repeating the same crap over and over and over, aren't they? I to the negative 2nd is 1 over I squared. I squared is negative 1. 
and the result is a negative one. And I'm going to be done with that lesson, and hopefully you guys fly right through it. Some of you will struggle. You'll not watch a video. You'll just sit there and guess and guess and guess and guess. You'll brag about how you know it, and then you will flunk Friday's quiz. What did I just write down? I got distracted. I went on a rant. I wrote down negative one. All right, that's the last of the imaginary videos, kids. Have fun with it. I know I did. One thing you may not realize is you can't have electricity without the concept of imaginary numbers. Imagine what your life would be like without I. No electricity. No electronics.